When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. But how, exactly, did life give us lemons? They haven't always been available, and even when they were, they weren't always easy to acquire. A 25 cent glass of lemonade from a stand would probably shock a Roman aristocrat, for example, who probably viewed them as an exotic rarity. Moreover, the lemons used in that drink could have had even more value to a 17th century Parisian fearing the plague, or a sailor from the 18th century. It could very well have saved their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Fire of Learning's Food History Series, a series in which we discuss the surprising and amazing stories behind the foods we eat every day. Thank you for joining us in this episode as we discuss the history of lemons. Where did lemons come from in the first place? Well, before we can look at that, it should be mentioned. The taxonomy, or system of classification, of citrus fruit in general is slightly more complicated than most of what we've discussed so far in this series. Limes, oranges, and lemons are not different cultivars of the same species. They are not purely separate species either. They are each themselves hybrids of different species of citrus. As far as lemons go, citrus limon, the two parent species are the citron, Citrus medica, and the bitter orange, Citrus aurantium, the latter itself being a hybrid of the pomelo and mandarin orange. As a result, there is much confusion surrounding the origins of lemons and many other types of citrus. However, it is known that the cultivation of citrus trees in general began in Southeast Asia, roughly in this region perhaps around 4,000 years ago. Centuries before lemons, one of its parent species, the citron, had spread all the way to the Mediterranean. Their remains have been found in gardens from ancient Persia dating to as far back as the 5th century BC. There is some evidence that citrons arrived before this, but it is not very reliable. However, their domestication probably started in India. A century or so later, they were encountered by the Greeks. The first clear written reference in history seems to be from the Greek botanist Theophrastus, who mentioned them around the year 310 BC, shortly after the Age of Alexander, who had invaded Persia and exposed the Greeks to many Eastern curiosities. Citrons still exist today, though they're not as popular. They have a weak taste and are mostly rind, compared to many of the popular types of citrus of today. This latter trait is undesirable while eating, but probably helped to preserve them as they spread. Merchants spread them throughout the Mediterranean, allowing them to be enjoyed by the other societies which would arise here, like the Romans. Citrons are, again, a parent of lemons, but not quite lemons. It was in Southeast Asia, possibly in the region of Assam in northeastern India, that lemons themselves first arose. When exactly the lemon arose, and when it began to spread, is a mystery. Lemon seeds, and especially fruit, do not preserve well, and there are virtually no ancient written records on lemons themselves. Nevertheless, there is evidence dating to around the 1st century BC and 1st century AD of lemons in the Roman Empire. These include things like possible artistic depictions of lemons, as well as archaeobotanical remains, like seeds and fossilized pollen. Pollen is especially useful because it demonstrates that a plant was growing in an area, and was not just an imported product. Though there is, again, no known Roman writing pertaining to lemons, Israeli researcher Daphna Langut has argued that this in itself, combined with the circumstances in which the evidence we do have has been found, would suggest they were rare in Roman society, probably considered exotic and probably exclusive to the elites. Clearer evidence of lemons, including the first time they are mentioned in writing, does not appear for another thousand years, when they reappear in the Islamic world. The first written reference to lemons comes from the Arab scholar Kustus al-Rumi in the 10th century in his book on farming. The medieval Islamic world stretched from modern-day Spain all the way to modern-day India. Lemons were distributed across this range, evolving from rare elite luxuries into ubiquitous cash crops. They were grown alongside other citrus that farmers and merchants of this region were spreading, like bitter oranges and limes, which are often confused with each other in historical records. 
The Arabs and Persians called it Limun, which probably was derived from the Malay word Lima. This led to our English word Lemon and Lime. Like today, probably not many people were biting straight into lemons. Rather, they were often used as a flavoring, combined with other foods and drinks. There was a drink popular in places like Egypt in this time called Katarmizat, made of lemon juice and sugar, the first known lemonade. Not only were lemons used as food, but they were also believed to have various medicinal properties. The flowering trees were also grown ornamentally, and the peels were used for their fragrance. Lemons seem to have reached China during the same era. Texts from Christians traveling to the East in the Crusades reveal that most Northern Europeans weren't very familiar with the lemons they were encountering in the East in this time. Indeed, their spread into Northern Europe would have been stunted by the cold weather that this tropical evergreen tree does not tolerate well. Though not so popular in Northern Europe yet, they had reached and were reaching many parts of Southern Europe. Because of their presence in Islamic Iberia, the Spanish and Portuguese were already very familiar with lemons when their nations were forming during and after the Reconquista. It seems Spanish and Portuguese explorers began spreading lemons around the world right away, as they planted them in the lands to which they traveled. Columbus himself planted lemon trees in the Caribbean in 1493. The Spanish would also introduce lemons to Florida, California, and much of Latin America. Likewise, the Portuguese would introduce them to Brazil, which would become a major supplier of citrus, and probably the areas of sub-Saharan Africa that the Arabs had not reached. Lemons would also be popular in Italy, partly owed to former Arab rule over Sicily, which was now ruled by the Spanish. In the 17th century, lemons became more popular in countries like England, France, and even colonial America, as things like increased production and trade lowered prices. The upper classes in Northern Europe would construct structures called orangeries, greenhouses intended to keep orange, lemon, and other plants of warmer climates from freezing in winter. Many European monarchs like Louis XIV, and even American presidents like George Washington, are recorded to have grown lemons in their orangeries. On a related note, it is also said that the ladies in the court of Louis XIV would use lemon juice to redden their lips. In many large European cities like Paris and Rome, there was a kind of lemon craze. By 1676, a French company called the Compagnie de Lemonadier was creating a kind of lemonade made with honey and alcohol. They employed vendors called limonadier or lemonaders to carry tanks of the drink on their backs to sell to Parisian customers. Many Parisian cafes also sold lemonade. Unbeknownst to these Parisians, lemons may have actually saved some of their lives. Tom Nealon, author of the book Food Fights and Culture Wars, has argued that lemons inadvertently lessened the impact of mid-17th century outbreaks of plague in Paris. The chemical limonene contained in the abundance of lemon peels that were being discarded into Paris's sewers and trash may have actually killed plague-spreading fleas. If true, this would not have been the last time lemons saved lives. While many of the medicinal properties attributed to lemons throughout their history were not exactly real, some of them actually were. Throughout history, people, especially sailors, and especially those who voyaged to distant lands, were plagued by a mysterious disease called scurvy. Today, we know that scurvy is a disease which results from a lack of vitamin C. Symptoms, which could include pain throughout the body, swelling, tooth loss, exhaustion, and poor wound healing, tend to set in after about a month of vitamin C deprivation. Eventually, the disease becomes quite gruesome and leads to death. As early as the late 15th century, sailors like Vasco da Gama knew that scurvy could be cured by the consumption of certain fruits and vegetables, specifically oranges and lemons. Accordingly, sailors would plant things like citrus trees in areas they expected to frequent. However, knowledge was limited and difficult to retain and spread. Furthermore, even in instances in which the solution was known, it was difficult to keep foods high in vitamin C on board ships for long durations. 
Vitamin C is actually fairly common in foods, but it is easily denatured by light, heat, and air, reducing its presence in foods that have been stored for long durations or sometimes cooked. The cure, furthermore, may have been kept secret in some cases as well. As a result, between the years 1500 and 1800, an estimated 2 million European sailors died from scurvy, more than from battle and shipwrecks combined. In 1747, in what is often regarded as one of the first controlled clinical experiments in history, British naval surgeon James Lind proved what was sporadically and vaguely known, that citrus fruit is highly effective in treating scurvy. However, even then, this knowledge was not effectively utilized. Nothing was known about vitamin C itself, and doing things like heating lemon juice caused the vitamin C in it to denature. The causes and treatment of scurvy remained debated as a result, and it continued to plague many vessels. It wasn't until 1795 that citrus was widely recognized as a cure for scurvy. It was in that year that three ships, sailing under the British Commodore Peter Rainier, well stocked with lemonade, made it to India and back without a single case of scurvy. British naval officials immediately began clamoring to have lemon juice on their ships. Within a few years, lemon juice, obtained from places like Sicily, became a standard ration on all British ships. Lemon juice was often preserved by being mixed with rum. Eventually, other citrus, especially limes, imported from British Caribbean territories, began to replace lemons. Because of industrial technology, fewer and fewer people were spending months at a time at sea without fresh food. As a result, the British Navy did not notice how much worse limes are at deterring scurvy, because the disease was in decline anyway. Lemon status as the best cure for scurvy in Britain was forgotten again and debate and ignorance surrounding scurvy lasted until the early 20th century, as is seen in circumstances like the Gallipoli Campaign. In the 1760s, the British scientist Joseph Priestley discovered a way to artificially carbonate water. Carbonated lemonade, a predecessor of modern soft drinks, was being consumed in Britain by the 1830s. The American lemon industry was inherited from the Spanish in the areas that would become the states of Florida and California, although it would take time for them to be grown on a large scale. This occurred in the late 19th century to compete with European exports from places like Sicily, although freezes in places like Florida would stunt the industry for decades. The women's temperance movement worked to popularize lemonade as an alternative to alcohol in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The Lemonade Stand, as a neighborhood enterprise operated by children, is a common sight during summer in the United States. Vendors have been selling lemonade from stands for centuries, so it's difficult to know when it first started to become a distinct, stereotypical activity of young entrepreneurs. The first known person to sell lemonade in his childhood, however, was the Dutch-American author Edward Boek in the 1870s, who sold it to travelers passing by his home on their way to Coney Island. It seems to have become a common activity by at least the 1940s. As an interesting side fact, there are different types of lemonade and terms for each of them. The standard mix of lemon juice and sugar, often with water, is called cloudy lemonade. Carbonated lemonade is clear lemonade. Pink lemonade, first mentioned in West Virginia in 1879, is just lemonade mixed with some kind of artificial or natural coloring, like fruit juice. Even though pink lemons exist, their juice is clear. There are a number of amusing myths describing the creation of pink lemonade, but though the truth of its origins are uncertain, it seems it was the circuses of the era that popularized it. Brown lemonade is lemonade made with brown sugar. The suffix aid in lemonade simply refers to the fact that it is not pure lemon juice. Today over 21 million tons of lemons are produced worldwide each year, the top three producers being India, Mexico, and China, who produce almost half the world's lemons on their own. And there we have it, the lemon, the sour fruit that has made life just a little bit more sweet. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I invite you to come check out the rest of Fire of Learning, especially the other videos of the Food History series, and to subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. To support the channel, you may make a donation through Patreon, linked which is in the description. A special thanks to my current patrons, listed here for their support. I also have a science channel called Lucinox, to which I have actually just uploaded a video, so come check that out too. Thank you for watching.